we're a hybrid studio. So we work with visual effects departments that marry digital effects and practical effects. So my STL files, my type of files are not what you see in like the automotive industry, aerospace industry. We work a little bit differently. We work with texture mappings and things like that. So it's a little bit of a learning process for us. But we started playing around with colors. Can we simulate an end product of a collectible? I think we're getting pretty close. This is within the first week of using this machine. You see all the details there. So for me, it's about what I show. If something does not have the detail as well as the color, it's a lost cause in my industry. So I needed to show color and detail. That's what I was going for in the skater program. Could I reproduce it? And what we have on screen and what people were used to in this new technology. And I think we pretty much pull it off. Is this our final end product? No. But this sells our idea at the meeting for us to move forward and get into it, get the job and get it done. And it just brings it to life. It's a beautiful thing. So we're going to go into another palette of what you see right here, this robot here that was an untitled project that was the basis for us to build a 22-foot robot. And we needed to sell the idea because there wasn't too much in the budget for us. So there it is. If this was printed in one, two, three, four, six pieces. All, all pieces utilized about eight different shades of colors inside of it. This was assembled within two and a half days. Uh, extreme level of detail. Uh, this we went over so well with the director on this movie that we were able to then get the green light to go into a 22 foot build. Nothing is missed in this technology and it's beautiful. If I could only show what we were, everything that we were doing in this, in this technology, it would really blow people away. As Bruce was talking about digital ABS and the overmolding capacity, it's so valuable to us at this point. It's, everyone's now ignoring our lower end machines and going right Conic 3 technology and one piece of it. Another nice thing of this technology, which I don't think a lot of people have ever heard about or going to hear about, is just the general maintenance on this machine. Uh, I'm used to my agents and my comics is going through a spreadsheet and doing weight balances and things like that. There are a lot of operations now in this in the whole maintenance procedure that's pretty much automated for the most part. As far as doing my weight check, my head optimizations, and things like that, which make it really nice for me as an operator. I can run around go crazy on my other technologies and other areas of focus and let the machine do what it's supposed to be doing with all its current technology. I really like that. The other thing that I really like in this machine is if anyone's familiar with Connex 500 technology, changing materials. Changing materials, A, time consuming, more expensive and things like that. This machine allows me to now go through different phases of materials. If, if someone has the head on their shoulders to know where they need to go with materials, it's not necessarily just purging out with this way of getting around to really be cost effective with material replacement and if a certain color isn't necessarily needed, as well as the new purge assembly. The new purge assembly is really nice on this machine, how it hits up on the bottom of the head design and it's very clean and there's not, you don't need much cleanup at all. My last project that I'm going to show you, I mean, you can see just how beautiful this detail is on these feet, so I encourage anyone to go over there and take a look at it, especially under the feet. It's a beautiful thing. So, this is my last project that I'm allowed to show, and this is the project that I am the most proud of of anything that I've rp to begin with in this state. Like I said, I need to sell this machine to very high level, high critical people of what detail is going to be. And I was working on one project, and I gave ourselves a little bit of a challenge. Can I simulate fabric in a rigid piece? I wanted to be able to throw something down to the eye, to the camera, and have someone think that it was a piece of fabric, even though it was rigid, as well as be colorful. Started out with a helmet. Helmet looks good. I have scribe lines in it. Looks really nice. That's not fabric. Move into gloves. Can I simulate it? I think that looks like fabric. This is right off the machine. That's what I came here to show you guys. That's what I thank you. Thanks, Jason. That's awesome. And as, as I said, both Patrick and Jason are available. I think uh, Jason, you're around through the day tomorrow, and then I think. Uh,
Patrick will be here through Wednesday. So.